What is up everyone, JD here. Hope you're doing well today. Got a review for you. We're gonna be taking a look at the Migoron Kyrex. Let's get into it. All right, so what we're gonna do today, I was just using this a little while ago. We're gonna jump into the size comparisons. We're gonna weigh the knife and then we're gonna jump into my thoughts and impressions. So let's kick it off. I'm just gonna do a couple of size comparisons, uh, some that I think are really gonna help the audience out. We're gonna check it out against the Quiet Carry 9, which you can see here from the pivot, very close in size. We're also gonna take a look at the CJRB Echo, which I think is also a very comparable knife. We'll check the profiles out against these two because I think these are more interesting. Here it is against a more full-sized length knife, and that is going to be the Maverick from Tactile Knife Company. So you can see a little bit more length on there, even though the Maverick is a little bit more slender on the handle and the knife blade. And then one other full-size knife, going to do the Spyderco Shaman. So more of a medium-sized EDC, a knife that I didn't bring out here that I'm going to grab really quick that I think is very comparable in size is actually going to be the Benchmade Bug Out. I don't know why I didn't grab that one. So let's compare it to these knives that I think are a little bit more comparable in size. So here we go. Here we go for the thickness profile comparison. As you can see here, the Migoron a definitely thicker than the Bug Out. Sorry, I'm running out of space over here. And here it is against the CJRB Echo. So the Echo is going to be a little bit thinner, and then the Quiet Carry 9. And I think these two with the contoured scales are going to be about even. Now, let's check the weight out on this knife. Um, it does feel a little heavy for its size, but honestly, the weight feels pretty good. Like in the pocket, carrying it and handling it, it doesn't feel obnoxious. Um, or offensive in any way shape or form so 3.9 ounces coming in just under four ounces that's a that weight is just fine no issues with that weight whatsoever all right let's get into my thoughts and impressions on the knife so i'm going to go through the pros i'm going to try to change it up a little bit today and you're going to see me checking my list as i look down so let me move it over here so maybe that way i can give you a little attention uh when i'm talking about this particular knife so we're going to talk about the positives first and one of the positives on this is definitely going to be the ergos it has very slight contouring on the back of the spine very mild chamfering all around the edges there's absolutely no sharpness whatsoever even when you get out here you can feel a point but it's not sharp at all and then you have micro milling that really does benefit the grip it's not going to feel like it's going to slide around and slip around on you, which is really nice. I have plenty of space to hold this knife back on the handle and get all four fingers on there. And just a little bit hangs off the back here on the hand. And then I'm able to pull up in between the first and second knuckle of the finger and hold this knife comfortably for task. And I have just a little bit of wiggle room next to the blade. And if you're pushing down, which I have done in the cut test, not an issue whatsoever. Um, the micro milling on here is superb. It is really well done, very visible to the naked eye, but not from a distance, so it's very subtle, but it does help with the ergos. It makes the knife feel grippy. It's not a slick titanium that feels like it's just gonna slide out of the hand. So I really like that about this knife. Now, lock bar access on here is not that great. So. We hit it with the positive, now we're hitting with the cons. It's actually a little tight for me to get in there, but I can get in there. It's just, I have to kind of force my finger in, so I'm pushing down and out on the lock bar instead of pushing out. Adversely though, putting the finger in and lifting up on the lock bar and closing it this way is actually very nice, very comfortable, very easy to do. And I wish it had a little bit more jimping. You can't go up here and move it over as comfortably as you can kind of going back down to where the mill is. So if you go down to the mill, it's a little bit easier. And that's the same for um, putting the thumb in there. It, it The closer you get to the blade, which you want to do because you're actually going to drop where that choil is to the thumb instead of dropping the blade on the thumbnail. But if you come to the center, it's a little bit easier to actuate. You just gotta get your finger out of the way before you let it drop shut. 
The action on here is fantastic. Very smooth, shake at home, not a dropper, but really, really smooth. Detent is solid. And the sounds are really good. And I think this is going to continue to break in. So really good action, phenomenal detent. Well, it's a solid detent. Um, it's not super strong, but it's far from weak. I mean, it's a really good detent on here. Jumping on the front flipper tab is really well done and they take it all the way around. So even if you try to skate off of the top, it's gonna catch the meat and it's gonna fly open. Opening hole is a good size for the knife. I don't think they could have gone any bigger. Um, I can get in there with the fingernail, but what I have found is just hitting it right under the fingernail and letting it catch a little bit of meat really can grip it and rip it. It just really flies out. I like it a lot. Um, build quality feels fantastic. Uh, it was a little tight in the unboxing. If you go back and look at the unboxing, you'll see that I couldn't even get it to like disengage. So I had to back off the pivot a little bit. And then a couple of days later, I noticed that the pivot was backing out. So I had loosened it just a little too much. I've since adjusted it appropriately and it has remained. And I'm very happy with, um, with that. I don't have to use any thread locker, it seems like. And I think on the Pegos too, I did need to use a little bit of thread locker. But so far on this one, I'm not having to do that. Price on this is really good. This is about 180 bucks. Uh, if you go to White Mountain Knives and use JD for EDC, you'll get 10% off of that. And I've heard people say that you can find it here and there for a little bit less. I, I haven't seen that. This is a $180 knife and you're getting titanium with micro milling. You're getting titanium on your pocket clip, all steel hard hardware, hardware, hardware. You're getting steel lock bar insert and you're getting a blasted M390 blade that's being heat treated at 60 to 62. Those are all in the cutting performance. Good edge, um, it's, it's a cutter. This thing is slicing and dicing like nobody's business. So I wanna go through the cons for you because I do like this knife a lot, but there's some things that are actually holding it back a little bit for me. So one is gonna be that lock bar access, really tight access to the lock bar, but it's, if you have smaller hands, you may not even notice in it. You know, if you have below large size hands, you may not even notice it. But I have found that I actually, because of the location and where this rides in hand, I actually enjoy closing it just like you're seeing on camera right now. So I've compensated, but I had to compensate because that lock bar access was just too tight to always let it drop to the thumb. Um, thank goodness the lock bar isn't overly aggressive or super strong because then i really have a hard time trying to do it with that thumb but it does start to feel sore after a while and i'd like to save that thumb for that top flipper the top flipper works really good too i, I forgot to mention I, i'm able to do this you know all the different ways even the reach around on this one is easy to do you just got to ride the top beside the lock bar and not put it on the lock bar the next con and the biggest con for me is going to be this pocket clip this pocket clip is way too tight to the body. I'm moving some of the knives out of the way so I can grab my handkerchief. So my handkerchief folded over is about close to what the hem of the jean pocket is going to be like. And you can see this is really, really tight, guys. That's what she said. Um, when you go in and you hit it, it gets bunched up a little bit. So you got to push past that and... When you start to push it in on the jeans, what happens is you can't get it to go all the way. And actually, this is probably not as thick as the pants because my pants always stop right there. So that means you have that much knife sitting out of the pocket. They need to increase the height of this a little bit because it's extremely tight and, uh, you know, it bunches, which is an issue going in and out. It catches and this um external milled cut relief cut here it bounces off of the pocket clip so the pocket clip just needs a little bit of a rework i think raising it up a little bit and i think also coming away from that relief cut even if you make it on the inside um 
you don't have to make it on the inside. I think just coming away from that relief cut a little bit or making this roll wider so that it's a little bit more contact there so it can roll off of it a little bit more because I think it's such a direct drop that it kind of catches perfectly with that first relief cut there. Um, so this is that's a big issue for me, but it it's not enough for me to, to not recommend the knife. So hopefully that makes sense. Next issue is going to be the plunge grind. So mine came already getting a smile on there and I'll try to catch the light. That plunge grind, you can see where the light bends it, it goes all the way to behind the blade. I would like to see them bring that um, plunge grind back in so that you have full access to this knife to sharpen it down the road. So those are my big things. It's gonna be the pocket clip, it's going to be this plunge grind, and it's gonna be the lock bar access are the only negatives that I have for this knife. Price is banging, cutting performance and heat treat are good. Ergos are phenomenal, very good ergos, and build quality is astounding. Really well done, and I love the fact, because on the Pegos, there was some sharpness here for the lock bar, but I'm, I don't feel that at all. No matter how I'm holding the knife, no matter how I roll my hands across it, I don't find that at all. And for the money, this is a really good deal. M390, 60 to 62. If you're lucky, it's the 62. Titanium, titanium pocket clip, steel hardware. Not a big deal breaker. Steel hardware is going to be less susceptible to stripping. So your tools, when you're working on this, are going to less be less inclined to strip this, especially because it is T6 hardware, and I'm not taking away from that. Um, T8 in the pivot. Actually, you know what? Because we're getting ready to break into this knife. It's a recommendable knife. Um, if you want to hang out with me, I think I'm going to install some skips on it because I can see myself keeping this knife. So let's check real quick and check the hardware. It may all be T8, but I haven't broken into the knife to know for sure. So let's grab a T8 here. This is one that I actually do need to replace. So I'm gonna, well, let me just check. T8, 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 all T8, it's all T8. And I'm just gonna leave that out because I need to replace that one. I think I was trying to adjust my large pyrite and um, didn't go well. So now we're stepping into the disassembly and then I'm gonna measure for skiffs. If you're interested in that hang out if not thank you for tuning in i appreciate it i love you guys have a great week here we go let's go ahead and jump into the disassembly of the kyrex 2 so let's see do we have a chicago screw here is this going all the way through nope just there putting the pocket clip on so that is all that it's doing i really didn't even need to take that off so learn from that right there Let's go ahead um, and set that aside because it has steel hardware and I don't want it hitting the magnets. So let's go ahead and take apart the rest of the knife. Set my screw on the magnet so I don't lose it. Let's take that pivot out even though I have it perfectly dialed now. Whoops. And let that sit there. And it should just come straight apart. And these are definitely going to be five millimeters, I feel like. So we'll clean it up, but let me grab my skiffs. And then I'll need to go down and get a T8 when I'm done recording. So here are my skiff bearings. I have the skiff tool so that I can do the measurement for you guys as well on camera. I know you guys love to be able to see what size the skiffs are. A lot of you do really like putting the skiffs on there. So here you go, five millimeter, and it should be the 364th ball. I'm sorry, 1 16th, what am I thinking? Yeah, so that's pretty standard, five millimeter, 1 16th ball. So I am gonna go ahead and install skiffs on this. I really like this knife. I can see this being one that I will actually use and carry. And uh, if you caught the live, you kind of understand what the, what I'm saying there. So here we have the five millimeter, 1 16th. That's the size that we need. So let's grab one of these. If I get into the damn bag. All right, so we got the five millimeter, 1 16th 
which is going to be an 11 ball count. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine. Am I getting that right? I think I'm getting that right. So nine balls on there. We'll get these out of here. They're definitely a little dirty and a little grimy. So let's go ahead, <clears throat> clean it all up, lube it all up, and put it back together. But if you, again, need that size, I'll leave it here for just a second. Five millimeter, one sixteenth, 11 ball count. All right. So let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm cleaning it off camera. It's just the lighting is, I'm getting a little bit of shade. Uh, I also like that it has an internal stop pin. I didn't cover that in the review. So if you left early, you missed uh, the internal stop pin. I love that on knives. I wish more manufacturers would do that. Let me grab a circuit board cleaning Q-tip and let's hit the detent ball hole, even though it looks super clean. Yeah, really clean. And let's hit the pivot. Yeah, a little dirt, it, it wasn't awful, wasn't awful. All right, so we got that clean. Let's uh, see if we can get the, do I need a magnet? Oh man, this thing was super grimy. You see that? And see if one of these magnets will catch it. There we go, there we go. Cause I do want to flip these. over and the reason i do flip these over is if they if the track's a little different i don't want it to wear a new track and then they kind of roll into each other and it'd be all wobbly and off or anything like that um, and these definitely have started to form a track on there so hopefully you're able to see that so let me clean this out i am going to re-lube it just because that lube behind it helps keep it from falling out of place until you can get everything in there. So everything is clean. Double check these, because I don't know if I got these cleaned up or not. Yeah, that one definitely has a deep track going already. That is crazy. Makes me a little concerned, because I wonder if the washers are hardened. So I'll keep an eye on that, and uh, I'll update. I will update if they aren't. Yeah, see what I'm saying? And that, that's from three, four days of using it. We'll keep an eye on that. All right, so grab your lube and let's start with the reassembly process. I better remember not to um, forget to go get my other T8. We're gonna flip this over and use the smooth side. I might try to find out what size washers these are. I might go to knifemaker.com. Ooh, that is too much lube. I might go to knifemakers.com and see if I can find some hardened washers. And uh, I might swap these out if these are not hardened. Okay, that is a lot of lube. I don't want to put too much on there. All right, so smooth sides are out. I forgot to get the bearings out of the pack. Damn, my fingers are a little, uh, there we go. There we go. We'll clean these up and put those away in a minute. Let's keep going for video's sake. All right, so we got some nice five millimeter, 16, uh, one sixteenth balls here, ready to go. Throw those down. Let's grab the blade that on oh you know what i forgot to do i'm gonna throw a little bit on the pivot too there we go a little bit on the pivot i'm gonna throw the blade back on there's a little bit of wiggle room there but you don't feel it when the knife is uh engaged so that's good but these are going to be really smooth these feel really thick. 
I don't know if it's just because I've been putting on so many of the thin ones lately. So we'll throw that down. Yeah, they fit snug. Go ahead and, oop, I know I forgot one thing. Just a little bit of lube there in front of the detent ball hole for it to pick up as it's opening and closing. And there you go. Now you can just get your screws in. That's what she said. And tighten everything up. And you should be done. You'll just need to adjust your pivot to make sure that you don't have no play. And to make sure that it drops shut. There we go. All right, and let's put the pocket clip back on. This pocket clip that I just finished griping about. We'll check centering and blade play and wrap it up. That should be everything you need to install, or even if you wanted to take it apart and clean it, your Migron Kyrex should be all set. Nice and centered. No side to side, no up and down. You can feel a little bit of the clicking in the, in the pivot. The tolerances aren't super tight there. Man, that is, between cleaning it and putting the skiffs on it, wow. Wow, keep an eye on that to make sure the pivot doesn't back out. Might try to, yeah, just a little bit more. Yeah, that is smooth. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. There you go. There's your video, including maintenance and skiff install. I hope it helped you guys out there and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around with me. Shout out to everyone that leaves the likes, that comments, and is subscribed. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.